Let me begin by saying these are disquieting times. There is a lot of uncertainty in the land. I really don't remember when there has been such a uniform crisis of confidence across America. Economically, of course, but also culturally and politically. Folks wondering what has happened to the terra firma of the American way of life. Can it be recaptured and restored and expanded upon? That is in large part what political campaigns and elections are all about. Taking stock of who we are and making in a very personal way, but also in a very political way, a kind of assessment of what counts in our lives and what our priorities ought to be. Let me, if I can then, frame this election in three different ways. First of all, whoever wins next Tuesday will face the most daunting opening act of any president in my lifetime. Not since FDR in 1932 have we had a president who will face as many extraordinary challenges of great depth and great breadth and challenges that are systemic to not only this country, but our place in this global environment. We do have an economy and a stock market that at the moment is in free fall. And it has global consequences. It happens at warp speed. And the complexities are so great that the people who sit in those ivory towers on Wall Street or in the institutions that study them really don't have a keen sense of just what has happened and why it's happened the way that it has. There are the smartest people that I know on Wall Street who, when I say to them, what is a derivative, they have a hard time explaining it but the financial institutions were heavily invested in them. And when they began to go south, they paid a terrible price. And in a way, this ripple effect across the country is not yet done. Those are the economic circumstances. We're also at war in two countries, two wars that are not yet resolved, and there's no clear indication that they will be anytime soon. Afghanistan is worse, not better, than it was just a year ago. Iraq is slightly better, but it's not fair to say that there is a big bright light at the end of that tunnel. There is a glimmer that there is a possibility that some arrangements can be made so the Iraqis can take control of their own destiny and be responsible for their security. And the overlay of all that is that Islamic rage has not gone away. In fact, there are too many people in too many impoverished countries in the Islamic world who grow up with the notion that they have no greater or holier mission in life than to throw their bodies against what we hold dear, the Western ideal of pluralism and women's rights and tolerance. And so part of the charge that we all have is to find a new way of dealing with that. Because we are living on a smaller planet with many more people, and we're forced to live in much closer circumstances than we have in the past. 